Hello, City Church. I am so excited to be with you today, and um, I'm really excited. I'm overwhelmed with joy <laughs> that we are spending the entire year talking about the Bible. We're calling this year, 2021, the year of the Bible. All year long, we're focusing on the Bible. We're going to love the Bible. We're going to learn the Bible, and we're going to live the Bible. And we're going to do this in three ways, three ways to help us out. First of all, we're going to read the Bible. If you're, you can hear me shout out, I'm reading the Bible. I'm reading the Bible. Reading the Bible. <laughs> we're going to read the Bible through. We're reading the New Testament in 2021. If you haven't joined us yet, you can join right away. Go on our website, click the link that says Bible Reading Plan. We are reading the Bible in 2021. Secondly, we're preaching the Bible. The entire series, the only series of 2021 is Bible. And that's it. We, we, we're, we're, we're just giving ourselves to absorbing more about the Bible and Bible truth and how it works in our lives than we ever have before. So we're preaching it. You don't want to miss any Sunday service. You want to hear what we're saying about the Bible, learn and let it get into your heart and into your mind. Third way this is going to help us this year is by discussing, talking about, studying the Bible with friends in a small group. In fact, Tammy and I have invited our small group to join us today to talk to you about our group, kind of some ins and outs of how it works, some things we've learned, things that have changed in our lives in the context of our small group. These are wonderful people, world-class, top-shelf friends, and uh, I'm going to take a moment just to introduce them to you so you can know how great they are. First is Dan and Kim Roy. They are, I would consider them, five-star, world-class Christians. I mean, they do everything with excellence, with passion, with dignity. Uh, they've been in the church maybe 15 years. Uh, I think it's more like 17. Yeah, like 16, 17 years. They are the owners and operators of a small business, and it's becoming more and more successful all the time. I believe that God has amazing financial miracles for their future. They're both very talented musicians. Uh, in fact, I don't know anything they don't do well. They're just amazing. They're just about to be first time grandparents. And I, my only advice is you better get going here, buddy. I've got five, you gotta catch up with me. So. <laughs> Dan and Kim Roy. Next is Sam and Ramona Jones. Sam uh, has had a successful career in Hollywood as an actor in both movies and television. Uh, most notable is a well-known movie, Flash Gordon. Sam is Flash Gordon. Yeah. And uh, so we have our own in-house uh, superhero. Right. Yeah. But the real superhero in their family is Ramona. Aww. Amen. To <laughs> Ramona, Ramona and Sam both actually are, have relentless faith, such a passion for Jesus. If I, if I wanted someone on my side praying for me, I'd want to make sure Ramona was there. A woman of faith and incredible prayer. We love you guys. Tammy and I just love, 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 love Sam and Ramona. Sam, you've become one of my best friends. And I, uh, same here, Pastor. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I love you so much, and um, just looking forward to continuing to do life with you guys. And thirdly is our dear friends, Joe and Simone. Joe and Simone came to our church 22 years ago. The church was maybe three, four months old, and they are two of our most cherished, lifelong friends we've ever had. Uh, we love them like family. So proud of who they are and so grateful for what they do in the church. Uh, Joe has had a successful career as an aeronautical engineer. And I would describe Joe as being brilliant, honestly. And uh, I think there are some entrepreneurial success marks coming ahead for Joe that will be mind-boggling. Uh, Simone and Joe both have been super active in the church. Simone actually, actually working at the church. She worked with children's ministries. She worked with uh, outreach, with worship. Right now she oversees our, all of our prayer ministry. Um, Super excited about that because I get the benefit. And I know that she's stirring up a lot of people to pray for me as I'm going through the balance of the chemotherapy treatment. I'm thankful to you for doing that. Thank you all you guys praying for me and so many people at the church. Thank you for praying for me. I'm doing well. I have just a few more treatments to go and we're done. Right. Yay, I'm excited about that. Oh, thank God. Thank, thank you, thank you for the prayers, church and group. Um, 
We also have with us today, uh, we invited Nick Snyder, who is a pastor over small groups at the church, and he's going to ask us some questions, and we'll see where God takes us. We're going to learn tonight, and grow, and get excited about small groups. There you go, Nick. Yeah. Well, Pastor Jerry's been involved in a group since the church started 22 years ago, so this is going to be really fun. We get to kind of plop down here in the middle and get a behind-the-scenes look at, at what your group is really like. And... Um, why you feel groups are so important. So I'm just going to start with the elephant in the room, the question we're all wondering, what is it like to be in a group with the lead pastors? (laughs) Sam, Sam, what's it like to be in a group with Pastor Jerry and Tammy? Well, obviously, it's a huge blessing. I think we started here 14 years ago. And um, yeah, I mean, we were, I wasn't, I was in a bad place, you know, all on my own, just... uh, Self-induced, let me say that, because my wife is such a supporter. And, you know, this, uh, this invitation for the friend group, for the connect group came along. And, you know, it's amazing. We can go to church, but we can still be isolated. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was going through that. And I didn't want to share anything, you know. <laughs> um, anyway, and I think that's the nature of most, most of us guys. And uh, so we got the invitation, and I told my wife, I said, well, look, you know, what if I'm cold? She says, bring a jacket. What if I'm hung- hungry? Bring food. What if I don't like that? Then you don't have to go back. <laughs> so, we, you know, and this other thing was going on for me, was bothering me for a couple of years. We, we had this thing, I don't know if it's just in America, but when we walk by somebody, we do this greeting. How you doing? Good. How you doing? Good. And I, I kept saying to myself, don't they see my eyes? Don't they know I'm not doing good? But so I just played along. And finally, when the Connect Group started, I saw that, wow, you know, this was the time. I heard that voice say, it's time. Stop it. Stop the facade. Stop the isolation. And, um, you know, we we did the greeting. And then a couple minutes later, I just said, you know, I, 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 I want it to stop in my life. I'm not doing good. I'm not doing good. And, uh, there it is. So I want change. And, Change has happened. It's been in 14 years. It's been a, a huge blessing, and it, with the guys, and and the pastors and the men, we have a way of eliminating the nonsense and and, and eliminating the opinion and getting right to the core of the issue: growth and freedom. Wow! So 14 years, something must be working right. You guys are still here after 14 years. I love that. Thanks, Sam. Um, so someone else, what's it like to be in a group with a lead pastor? Uh, Kim, what's it like for you guys? What's it like being in a group with Pastor Jerry and Tammy? Well, at first, it was very intimidating. <laughs> but once we came and questions were asked and we were reading the scripture, we'd have questions, we'd answer, and I got to hear the hearts of everybody in this group, including wow. our pastors, you know, their heart. They're real people. Everyone in this group, I just treasure so much. And um, we have lots of laughter in our group. We laugh a lot. And uh, we just share life together. Um, And I have to say, our times of prayer are amazing. You know, just just praying together and, and reaching out to the Lord and His presence comes and just seeing Him touch each one of us during times of prayer. And my favorite part is when we separate and the men have their time and we women get our time. And that intimacy of of just discussion and prayer and lifting one one another up is um, a real treasure to me. So thank you so much for inviting us and uh, we love it. We love you. <laughs> um, you guys have been together for a long time, like 10 years you guys have been meeting, and yeah. how awesome is that? And Simone, I hear that you are the one who kind of coordinates all of this, and I'm sure there are a lot of busy schedules, rocket scientists, business owners, superheroes. So how, <laughs> what do you, what do you, how do you get everybody, you know, I know you guys meet weekly, so how do you get everybody's schedules together? And I know you help those logistics happen. So how do you make that happen? How do you get everybody together practically weekly on a, on a regular basis? Well, 
Of course we text, because that's what everyone does now. Um, and so we text each other. You know, a lot of times when our group would start out at a new season, it might be a little difficult. Schedules are different and trying to get everyone on the same page as far as what time really works for them. You know, sometimes it didn't work out. And so it might just be um, one couple, or our pastors were always so faithful, and them with one other couple, you know, and, and us included, you know, something might come up with our schedule, and, and it didn't work out. And so that would, you know, that's a little bit challenging. But but the reality is that over time, um, as you continue to come, that it's really easy because everyone adjusts. You're so excited to see each other that you schedule everything else around your small Love group. That. So let's say your kids have, you know, they're going to do a practice or they're going to, you know, or you're going to start up something new. You choose not to do that on the day of your small group because it's just really important. You want to be together. So you don't want to miss out on that time. Yeah. So I'm really thankful everyone here is just amazing. Wow. I'm glad to hear that you guys have groups where only one person comes. So we're not the only ones. <laughs> that happens here too. All right. Sam. <laughs> That's just, just Sam. It makes me feel better. Sam always comes. He's, oh, come yeah. on. I love it. So thanks, Simone. Awesome. And Joe, for you, question. I know you're really close with all the guys in this group. You guys have really close, tight friendship, um, but it wasn't necessarily that way prior to the group. So how did the group help you de develop a close relationship, close friendship like that? Well, first off, it's pretty easy to develop a friendship with this group. Um, I've known uh, 22 years. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> a long time. Wow. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you, guys, uh, for being our friends. But as far as the, uh, the group is concerned, uh, I think uh, Kim already touched on it. When we separate and, and the guys go into another room and, and the, the ladies go into another room, yeah. where we pray with each other, we're open and we're just uh, transparent with each other. Mm. And when, when um, somebody has a need or somebody is, is going through a hard time, we can be open at that time. And we just, I believe that that's where the friendship occurs. Cool. When, when we can lay hands on each other and Pastor, thank you for your wisdom, uh, your, um, your courage. It's a privilege to pray for you. I know you have needs, and, and uh, um, you guys have been just great friends. And that's how uh, the friendships have, have developed over the years. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've been together for, I don't know how many years now, five, six years now. Mm -hmm. Speaking of being transparent and, and breaking up and, and sharing what's going on with your life, Sam, I heard a story about you, uh, maybe back when, the, when the group, you, know, you were kind of new to the group and you alluded to it earlier, but um, there was a moment, maybe before there was that feeling of comfortability where people were really being honest and real about how they were feeling and where they were at, and you kind of shared and you were really transparent and it really broke the ice. I know the, the story's a little bit humorous, but um, would you mind sharing that? You mean on the ride over where I didn't want to go? Is, I, was that the one? I've heard. Yes, that's how I've heard it. Yeah, I mean, I, I, on the ride over, we were arguing. My, uh, my lovely wife, Ramona. Uh, it's it's always my fault because you know I I it's, I'm just I can't help it. You know, well I can't help it now, thank God. But we were. The funny thing happened. We're arguing the whole time. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. But the car is driving, and we end up in front of their house. How did how you do that, that Ramona? How does we, that and we sat there. It's amazing. Arguing, right? Tell him, yeah. For 10 minutes, yeah. we sat there arguing him, in the car yeah. because he did not want to get out. And he was complaining, well, I need some tea. And, you know, um, I didn't bring my jacket. And it was just, he just didn't want to go in there. And so. But also tell him that, you know, the yeah, reason why I yeah. went in. Because, okay, can I finish? Okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was going to call Pastor Jerry and say, please, call my husband, <laughs> you know, but um, he finally, I dragged him out there, and we went in there, and boy, we went in one way, and we went home uh, totally different. Amen. I mean, well, our lives right. changed. That's awesome. Well, I mean, uh, I, another thing we learn in the group, the guys, is uh, we learn, especially me, to get over ourselves. I've learned more and more to get over me. If I get over me first, then this magical thing thing usually happens is that we get freed up, okay? We get freed up and now we can be a blessing. So right. that, that, that's been my biggest battle, but my, yeah, the pastors and, and Joe and Dan and then 
uh, praying for us. But yeah, Joe said, uh, going into, after we do the couple thing, it's powerful. Then we split up. I, I remember one time, I think I said, or somebody said, what do you want to pray for? I want to pray for uh, Uncle Marvin and Aunt Nancy. <laughs> you know what? We'll get to them later. What's happening in your life right now? Woo! Yeah. We, we eliminate that and we cut exactly. right to the core of it. Yeah. So you guys were fighting on the way over and uh, there was a moment when you just decided to get real and you shared, hey, this is what we're really going through. Yes. And, and um, so here's the real behind the scenes question. Ramona, how did you feel about, how did you feel about that when he, when he shared about how you guys were struggling in, in, in your marriage and those kinds yeah. of things? I actually was very relieved. I just felt like Sam, you know, like most men, you don't want to open up, you don't want to share. Uh, there's some pride issues. And I knew that he needed to be able to talk about it because it was so That's real. Good, we were hurting. And I needed him to. And it, it actually freed us. It liberated us. I felt like, you know, that burden that we were carrying, all of a sudden we had people to come alongside and help us and, and you know, and just encourage us. You know, there was no judgment ever. It was just love and encouragement. And everything we heard there was, you guys can do this. It's going to get better. And that's what we needed to hear. And Pastor Jerry, I know um, you always say that that honesty, the transparency, the being real, sharing what's going really going on in your life in a group is what leads to lasting, right. sustained life change. We've heard it before, but for you, why do you think that was such a powerful moment when Sam decided to be honest about what was going on? This was a new group. We'd met maybe three months, and we're getting to know each other pretty well. The friendship was sincere but we really hadn't had any real breakthrough of openness and transparency because you have to build, you have to walk through the issues of building trust. And so we're not expecting anyone to go in a group and the first day you're there, you spill your guts necessarily. But Sam and Ramona, just imagine that night if they'd stayed and they came in late and, and imagine if they just drip, drove the car home. Or imagine if they came into the group and began to think thoughts like, we can't tell them how we're really feeling because they won't get it. They won't understand or they'll think less of us or no one can help us. So you're thinking wrong. You just want to get out of here and leave instead of those things. I'll remember the day. I, I mean, I, I've referred to the story many times. Sam stood up and said, I'll, I'll just tell you the truth. Let's just get real here. We were in the car. We were late because we were arguing about not coming in because we're fighting and we're having problems in our marriage. So there you go. I said it. And he said that. And I felt something shift in the atmosphere of our group that moment. And looking at the two of them, their sincere heart, they began to share, we prayed for them. The cool thing is, Ramona said, they came one way and they left another way. <laughs> the cool thing is, not only did they change, our entire group changed because of their willingness to be open and real. I'm, I'm thinking of two words, if I could just be a pastor for a moment. Uh, um, uh, two words, I think, that make groups successful. There's a lot of words, but two that are hanging in my mind, my spirit tonight. One is habit, and second is transparency. We had made a, a, a commitment, if you remember, Sam Ramona, we decided, we, we signed a little paper of agreement. I was going to say that. Yeah. We signed a contract. That we were going to stay we in the group. talk about and pray about stays right here. That's it. That's right. We've made a commitment to, it's a safe place to be real, and we're committed to the group. Don't stop. We're committed to the group. We're going to make it a habit. And, and I got the scripture, it's been on me since COVID uh, broke out over a year. Can you believe it's been a year? Yeah. About a year ago. It, it just nails it. It's Hebrews 10, 25. This is not the time. I think it's, it's prophetic to today. This is not the time to pull away and neglect meeting together. As some have formed the habit of doing, repeatedly not looking upon a small group as being advantageous, you suddenly form a habit, it's, I don't need that. We're reversing that saying, form a habit that I'm committed to this group, regardless of what I'm going through, regardless of what I feel, as some have formed the habit of doing, in fact, we should come together even more frequently and encourage and spur each other forward. That's the group, and that night you 
did that. You were committed, you stayed in the group, and you, you, you said, we're not, we're not gonna leave, we're coming back, and we're gonna see this through. Second word is transparency. It's not a real popular word. A lot of people will be raw in a mean way, but we're talking about when you are sincere about who you are and where you are and asking for help. Another scripture for you, this is a beautiful one. James chapter five, verse 16. Confess your faults. That could be mistakes, that could be sins, that could be struggling marriage, that could be struggling in purity, that could be struggling financially, you name it. Fill in the blank. Confess your faults to one another. There's that one another thing again. We need a group. Confess your faults to one another and pray for one another. Don't just tell me the problem. Now let's, let's get some prayer going here. Confess, then pray, that you may be healed. God's a healer, and he wants us healed, and all of us have experienced this in the group, where we've had to be vulnerable and real, hurting physically, emotionally, spiritually, worried about our kids, concerned about our finances, whatever they were, and we just take off the mask and share where we are. Confess where you are, receive prayer, then comes the healing. It could be, let me shift to the church, it could be that the healing for you is in your small group. So yeah, there you go. I remember that night. Thank you, Sam and Ramona, for leading the way. I love transparency. We try to live that way. And it, it, just, it just releases God to work. Shake off the pride. As Sam always says, get over yourself. <laughs> love it. There you go, Nick. Yeah, powerful. <clears throat> Habit, transparency. I like it. Um, so moving over here, you guys, Dan and Kim, I know the last five or so years has been challenging for you guys. You have actually made a career change right. and pioneered a brand new business, both you and Kim together, and you're still in the midst of, of fighting for that. So my question is, um, how has being in a group helped you with something as practical as starting and owning a business? Uh, well, we, we started in the group at a really interesting time in our lives. Uh, I had retired after 30 years with, in a corporate job, and we decided to start a business, and we had been very involved with the church. We'd led a lot of groups. Yes, you have. Uh, but because of the, uh, the, the time commitment, we just we didn't have time for a group. And then about six months in, as I was dragging myself through the hallway, I ran into Pastor Tammy, and she's like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I don't know. Things are tough. You know, money's going out, but it's not coming in. And she's like, you got to come to the group. And I'm like, oh, please. And uh, it's about 30 miles for us, but we, wow. you know, we love coming. Love that. And uh, so uh, just on the practical side of the business, us uh, practical side of things, there are businessmen in the group, and uh, it's been very helpful getting Christian uh, um, advice about how to run a business. But more importantly, it's the prayer portion of it. And I mean, we needed prayer in the worst way. I needed prayer in the worst way. I I literally dragged my, <clears throat> excuse me, dragged myself there a, a couple of times, and um, uh, these men and women literally lifted me up, and especially the times when the men can uh, meet together, because I think we'd all agree that that men aren't as good as this as women are in general. You know, we we don't get transparent as quickly. We have pride, um, but once that form that bond is formed, then the relationships become very very close, and that happens from transparency. Yeah. I can honestly say that of all the groups we've been in, those people in those groups have been, are the closest friends I have in life. So this group has done that for me, and I'm just, I love everybody in this group. We love the pastors. We, we're just so thankful that we can get a chance to pour into their lives because they spend their lives pouring into the rest of ours. Thank and you. they need it to, uh, as much or more than we do. So um, that's kind of the story of how it's gone for us, and we just treasure this like none other. I love that you have people in your same season, like you said, businessmen, that can pray for you with an authority because they know some of the things that you're fighting for. So what a cool picture. And thank you guys so much for supporting Pastor Jerry and Tammy and prayer. And um, it's awesome that they have that in a group to support them too. Pastor Tammy, question for you. What do you feel, we've heard a lot about this already, but just personally from your experience, what do you feel is the greatest benefit for being in a small group in church? Well, um, I think there's three benefits. One is friendships. Um, these um, gals I've been with are my closest friends. And you know, um, 
they say that um, the number one disease in America is loneliness. That's and right. we, we don't have to be lonely. I remember um, asking lots of different pastor's wives, what's something I can learn or do better or I shouldn't do as a pastor? And one of the things they would always say is you can never have friends. And, and um, I was always surprised I could <clears throat> never have a friend. Wow. But um, in my group, I've made friends. I, I know in your groups, people come and go, and they move away, and other things happen in their life. But these ladies I've been with more than a decade, mm -hmm. and they really have been my friends. And it's been proven that um, as a pastor's wife, I can have friends and, and trusted people that I could share who I'm really like and what I'm really thinking. And I so value the friendship that we have. And also, um, the second thing that I've really gained from this group is prayer. Um, Simone is a great woman of prayer. Um, Kim, a great woman of prayer. Ramona, oh my gosh, just wow. great women of prayer. And it says, the people that you hang around with, you'll become like. So if you don't have somewhere to have a friend, so you just hang out with the work friends, you just hang out with the neighborhood friends, or the school friends, or the moms at the park, you don't get this deep friendship and you become like the people you hang out with and i've become like them i'm a great woman of prayer because of these women i i can really say that now i mean i i can keep up with them in praying and and it's powerful so friendship and prayer and because we pray we see miracles and um, one of the miracles we were praying for sam to get um, some incredible uh, opportunity in hollywood and last year he was um Flash Gordon on um, the Super Bowl. And so many miracles. I mean, Dan's business during COVID, I mean, did his three best months, you know? Um, I mean, so many incredible things with Joe and Simone. And um, I just feel while Jerry and I are going through um, this struggle with fighting chemotherapy and all the side effects, they're praying for us and we're getting miracles. So friendships and prayer and miracles have been the benefit of this small group. And I'm so thankful that I can be a pastor's wife and really have friends. It's really apparent that you guys are, really are close, that this is, this is your real life and those friendships and those relationships with each other are so strong. Um, just one more question, Simone. So can you speak to how being in a group has not just helped with your relationships with these people who are your friends, but how has it improved your relationship with God? I mean, there's a couple ways. One that I've so appreciated is that um, we've been doing the study that um, we we get every week that it goes back over the message, and that is so powerful to sit around with a group of other believers, people who have heard the message, heard the word, and then to hear how it's changed their life. It just changes me just listening to it. I can just hear Kim whenever we you know separate or or Ramona and um, and then the men. Sometimes Dan will come up with something and and it's like wow, this is so powerful. Like the word of God is changing people's lives and and it's not just me. Like I. I heard something from the message, and then when they receive it, I'm like, oh my goodness, like it's changing everybody. And so um, being in a small group really has impacted me to hear how the Word of God is changing other people too. And then when you go through a hard time, it's so amazing to have friends who will text you a scripture. I mean, immediately you'll start, you know, you say, look, we're going through this. We need prayer. Maybe we need prayer right now. And you'll start getting scriptures. It's not somebody saying, oh, well, this, I think this idea, or maybe you should do this, or um, here's my opinion. But no, they give you the word of God. And that is so powerful to have somebody send you a text and just, you know, all of a sudden you'll get three, four, five, you know, scriptures just coming at you that are just so encouraging. And then it also is when, you know, you have something to celebrate, like Dan's business being successful. You have people that are around you that truly are happy, that are saying, good job. You know, we've been praying for this. This is a miracle from God. Love and that. to have those people who are around you who um, are in agreement with your successes, they're in agreement with what God's doing in your life. That's so powerful. And there's really nothing like that. This has become my family. We don't have any family here in San Diego. Um, you know, any relatives, but this is now my family, and I truly know and trust them and love them, and I feel loved and trusted, too. Thank you for sharing that. Awesome. Um, before we close, Pastor Jerry, do you have 
any last thing from your heart that you'd like to share with the church as to why everybody should be experiencing what we've seen up here today? <laughs> why should everybody be in a small group? Anything on your heart? Yeah, in fact, let me just turn to, to you watching today. Uh, my, my heart today, um, the, the thing that I would be asking for is that everyone in our church family would be in a small group. I, I would want you to have friends like this. And I know sometimes it's hard. There's schedule conflicts. We all have time issues and fatigue issues in the evening, etc. It's maybe hard to make it happen. I feel that often on the night of our group meeting. I feel like sometimes I don't want to go. I'm tired. But I push through because it's a habit. I've made a commitment to be in the group and I'm going to go. And when I go, inevitably, someone will have a good report and a little spark of life starts in my heart. Something is stated and it, my hope gets ignited again. Something is, someone reads a scripture, my faith increases. Uh, when it's time to share, if I'm in need, I feel open. I can share what's happening. Someone prays and I just feel like Jesus is standing beside me. And then I get a chance to pray for other people and use the gifts God's given me and I get to release like wealth brings a water flow through me. Life is flowing. It's a celebration atmosphere. I would want that for everybody. I want that for you. Yeah. I want it for the whole church. 2021 is the year of the Bible. And one of the ways we're going to accelerate our Christianity in reference to the Bible is reading it, talking about it, studying it with our friends in a small group. In fact, I want to close in prayer. Let me just pray. If you're watching today, if you're alive or you're watching online, would you just bow your heads? I just want to pray that the Holy Spirit will seal uh, what we've shared tonight in all of our hearts. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for bringing all of us together to the city church. We are church. We are family. We're doing life together. And I thank you for the people on this platform, how we've learned to love and to care and to share together in a phenomenal way. And I wish that, I pray that for everyone listening and watching today. Some who've maybe were in a group, got a little discouraged, walked away. Holy Spirit, would you speak to them right now? and cause them to feel this urgency, this need. Maybe my healing would be in a group. And some who have never really joined a group, or maybe they're new to the church. Today, we're going to have instructions in just a moment on how. Today, make the determination. I'm going to listen to my pastor. <laughs> I'm going to be sensitive to that little nudge I'm feeling from the Holy Spirit. I'm going to move forward and participate in this wonderful opportunity of making friends in a small group. I pray you to speak to every one of us listening. A fresh perspective on God moving in small groups in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. 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 Nick, you have comment to close us tonight. Yeah, this, this was such a fun time. This is great. This, thank you. This is awesome. Thank you. You know, I want to honor and appreciate you for letting us just kind of sit in and be a part of your small group. And, you know, you do life so well, Pastor Jerry. And I hope that I have friends like this when I'm younger, like you. <laughs> be careful. Be careful. <laughs> good, good save. <laughs> and, you know, maybe today you're wondering how you can get involved in a small group. And our small groups, they meet every week. We've got about 50 of them happening right now. And there's about 10 or 12 people in all of our groups. And we meet weekly, study the sermon, which is right now the year of the Bible. And we pray together and we support each other with friendships. And now is actually the perfect time to join a group because we are starting five new groups. Right. And um, we would love to help you get connected to one of those groups. Or if you would be willing to open up your home or even just um, if you want to meet somewhere, we're always looking for new leaders. So if you're interested in getting involved in a group or if you would be open to hosting a group, you can do that at any time on our website. And I would personally love to help you or answer any questions you have about groups. It's been so much fun. We'll see you in your group this week. Tammy and I moved to San Diego more than 20 years ago because we wanted this community to know that Jesus loved them. Jesus not only gave us eternal life if we believe in him, he defeated the curse. One thing we knew was that our church would never lack finances to provide the vision that he gave us. And your giving has done so much. Little gift. Yes. 
thank you so much for this. This means so much to me, you have no idea. We're just really appreciative of what you've given us. Welcome to the City Church. If you're new today, let me be the first to say we like you already. I want to say a special hello to those of you who are watching online. We love the City Church! And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Let me say thank you, church. Thank you for giving finances selflessly. Thank you for living generously. Thank you for making God's vision for City Church come to pass. And I want to tell you, we are not done. In fact, in many ways, I think we're just getting started. We look forward to the next 20 years, reaching tens of thousands of more people. So please, please continue to give generously, live selflessly and love with your actions as well as with your finances. And if you haven't jumped into this journey of generosity, could you please join us right now? Because great things are ahead for us. We hope you enjoyed this message today. We upload new videos every week for you to keep you feeling loved, encouraged, and experiencing powerful life change. And don't forget to click the like button and make sure you subscribe to our channel. Let us know in the comments how this message has encouraged you or changed your life. We love to hear from all of you watching. Jerry and I are praying for you, for your family, and we'll see you next time. And don't forget, when God is first, life is at its best.